Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Sacred Heart Church and our Eucharistic celebration. We extend a very special warm welcome to all of you here to celebrate the Mass of the first Sunday of Advent. The readings can be found on page 19. At this Mass, we pray in a special way for the repose of the souls of the Perone and Ahern families. Let us begin by praying our Sacred Heart offering found on the inside front cover of the hymn. O Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day, in union with the holy sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world. I offer them for all the intentions of your Sacred Heart, the salvation of souls, the reparation of sins, the reunion of all Christians. I offer them for peace and justice in the world, the well-being of my loved ones, in, in the, the intentions, intentions of, of our, our Holy Father, Father the Pope. Pope. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we begin our Mass and greet our celebrant, Father Matthew. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so we bear ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to warn forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer, you are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts? 
so that we fear you not. Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with mountains quaking before you. While you wrought such awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they never heard of from of old. No ear has ever heard, nor eye ever seen, any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait for him. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry, and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away with the wind. There is none who calls upon your name who rouses himself to cling to you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We, all, we are all the work of your hand. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A 
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him, you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Mark, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work and others the gatekeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore. You do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Good morning. Good morning. I hope uh, we all had a good Thanksgiving, given all the restrictions. Uh, there was this preacher who was draw drawing very heavily on his supply of imagery to describe the end of time. Thunder will boom, he cried out. Rivers will overflow, he thundered. Flames will shoot down from the heavens and the earth will quake violently, he shouted. And darkness will fall over the world, he concluded. A little boy, sitting in the front row of the congregation, nudged his father and asked, Dad, do you think they will let school out early? Now, you can trust children to get down to what's important. My dear friends, welcome to the season of Advent. A season characterized by waiting. 
waiting for the divine intervention of the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, both at the celebration of his birth at Christmas and at the end of time. Now, it may seem strange to begin the Advent season with a gospel reading about the end of the world. And notice also that the gospel readings marking the final weeks of the church year and culminating last week with the solemnity of Christ the King also had the end time as their themes. This is well intended by the church. And the purpose is to exhort us to keep the goal of our final destiny always before us. And so be enabled to persevere in faith as we begin a new church year. For truth be told, in the wider society of today, God now seems excluded from many hearts as humanity presses forward in the attempt to build a society without God. The huge advances made by the science communities in the last century has enabled it more and more to claim to offer explanations for the universe. Increasingly, scientists claim mastery over life and its manifestations, rejecting any and everything attributable to God. The result of this is that although through science, humanity has acquired tremendous knowledge and control of nature, it has gained much less knowledge regarding the inner man or the spiritual life. And while it is true that with the high advances in the scientific knowledge, the acquisition of amenities of comfort and ease has increased. It is equally true that mankind has found itself in an increasingly state of unhappiness with the attendant rise in suicides, in killings, in wars, and a growing angst during natural disasters such as the current pandemic. For as Jesus has reminded us, man cannot live by bread alone. For man is fundamentally a spirit. And the critical things of life, such as love, joy, peace, and happiness, are not quantifiable, but are mostly matters of spirituality. In addition, what is also often forgotten is that our time on earth is not unlimited. We all have an expiration date. 70 years as future had vices, or 80 for those who are strong and who listen to their doctors. Today's gospel message represents a call back to reality for us. We are urged to be watchful, to be on guard, because of the possibility that the end of the world may come suddenly. And while it is true that we do not know when the end will be, it is equally true that when we die, the world ends for us. Consequently, we, humanity, must avoid the mistake of, of equating the absence of God with his non-existence. The late Cardinal Cushion often told the story of a little girl who sat on her grandmother's lap listening to the creation story from the book of Genesis. As the wondrous story unfolded, the grandmother, noticing that the child was unusually quiet, asked her, well, my dear, what do you think of it? Oh, I love it, the child exclaimed. You never know what God is going to do next. Indeed, we can never know the mind of God. For as he has told us, as high as the heavens are from the earth, 
So my, are my thoughts above yours. Today's gospel reading is asking us to condition our minds and hearts to expect the unexpected of God. It is reminding us to stay alert always. And this message of this first Sunday of Lent is particularly very important for us at this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. For it goes right to the heart of humankind's experience. It addresses the question of human anxiety, which many of us feel at this time. God may seem absent. And sometimes it is inevitable that mankind should feel that this absent is a definitive one. But we should not be fooled. For the seeming absence of God lasts only for a short time. And its end comes quite suddenly. Therefore, my dear friends, it is imperative that you pay attention to the injunctions of today's scripture readings so as to be adequately prepared for the possibility of the end of time or of our own death. The season of Advent presents us with the opportunity for an internal review of our life. It is the season that gives us a chance to begin anew. And so let us resolve in this Advent season to take some time off our busy lives to reflect on our spiritual life to take stock of it with an ardent desire to repent of our sins and to change our ways. In preparing for this homely, I came across some concrete suggestions from an unknown source on the ways we could be living our lives in order to be adequately prepared for the end. In the home, it states, it is kindness. In society, it is courtesy. In business, it is honesty. At work, it is fairness. Towards the weak, it is assistance. Towards the unfortunate, it is sympathy. Towards the wicked, it is resistance. Towards the penitent, it is forgiveness. Towards the successful, it is congratulations. And towards God, it is reverence and obedience. My dear friends, in this season of Advent, may we have the grace and the courage to reform what needs reforming in our lives so that we can strengthen ourselves and our church in preparation for the celebration of the coming of our Savior, not only at Christmas, but throughout the new church year. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, him down from heaven. For the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come, come again, again in glory, glory to judge, judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is the adored and glorified, who has spoken, has spoken for the prophets. I believe in one holy, holy Catholic, Catholic and Apostolic Church. Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, this God whom we seek and who chooses to be ever present to us is a generous God who will hear our prayers. And so, we make our needs known to him. For all members of the church, that they continually stay awake to God's presence and glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Blair, all the priests, deacons, and religious, that they may be blessed with wisdom and holiness to guide the church this season of Advent, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That peace will flourish amongst nations afflicted by war and strife. And for the leaders of those nations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all people will seek justice and have compassion for the poor and hungry of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, that we may travel our Advent journey with new conviction about seeking God's presence in all that we do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve our country, those who have died, as well as victims of accidents, violence, famine, and disease, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who pray for this weekend, especially the repose of the souls of Perone and Ahern families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For intentions written in our book and those in our hearts. For these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. God of salvation, you call us to be watchful and stay awake for your presence to us. Hear these, our prayers, that we might conduct ourselves properly and on day, one day, live with you in everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, food of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, 
food of divine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. From both spirit and control, fraud may be accepted by you, Lord, and may sacrifice and deserve it is in you, Lord. Watch me for my sins. Cleanse me from my iniquities. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we are. Therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like they do full, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until. For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Leonard Blair our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen hard asleep in the hope of the resurrection and especially today the Peron and the Hearn families and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Joseph, Frederick, Theodor, Isaac, Joe, Marcelio, Paula Di Giovanni, and all who have died in your mercy, have mercy on us. That all we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may pray and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. O him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver, but deliver us, us from, from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, 
Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. of the world blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed
Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk in my path in thanks, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our giving tree is now up and ready for your generosity. We ask that you take a tag or two and purchase a gift card for one of the individuals we would like to help this Christmas season. The organizations are listed in today's bulletin. This Friday, December 4th, 
we will be bringing food to the McKinney shelter. If you can provide a ham, potatoes, or vegetables by 1 p.m. on Friday, please call or email the parish office. This past May, the Archbishop's annual appeal through the Vicarate Outreach Program sent $322,000 to 91 food pantries, homeless shelters, and soup kitchens throughout the Archdiocese. Last month, an additional $782,620 was dispersed and sent to 218 worthy charitable organizations. This is only possible because of the generous donors to the Archbishop's annual appeal. During this very difficult time of COVID, so many of our neighbors, some for the first time ever, are finding themselves in need of assistance. This weekend, we are asking for donations to the 2020 Archbishop's annual appeal so programs like this can continue to be funded. If you are able to make a donation, please drop it in the special basket at the entrance to the church, or go on our Sacred Heart website where you will find a link to enable donations online. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to the Mass. Thanks be to God. Holy Michael, the Archangel, the Archangel defend us in the battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do your prayers of the heavenly host. By, By the power, power of God, cast, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits, spirits who wander throughout the world, world seeking the ruin of souls. souls. Amen. Amen. Turn! 